Alrighty, welcome back to part three of the wings section for our, ve our vehicle. This will be the last part in chapter five, I believe it is, that we're on. And what we're going to do in this section is basically just work on the propellers right in here. You know, we've already got the paneling done, and so we don't need to do too much on there. But if we look at our concept by switching over to another layer just so we can see it clearly, you'll notice that we've got a little bit of stuff in here that I want to work with. Maybe we've got some extra little detail in here that I'd like to throw in. Uh, and then we might do a little bit on the sections in between the wings if we have a little extra time, but we may save that for later. So we're going to go ahead and do that. The first thing that I want to do is to just work on the propeller blades, and then we'll also go in and create this kind of fan grate on, it looks to be that's on the bottom side, and so that's what we'll do. So let's just flip this over, and let's first just select our blades. You notice we've got two separate meshes, and if I remember right, yeah, we did this as an array modifier, so we did this smart, where we're actually going to be able to just work on a single blade and have that repeated across, and we can actually even do it a little bit smarter in first you'll uh actually let me just check something i may have actually done this already uh no i didn't so what we want to do is to first select this mesh hit tab to go into edit mode and let's go and add in a subsurf modifier subdivision surface will increase the levels to two and turn on optimal display and let's select everything and hit w and shade smooth and then what i want to do is just to quickly add in some kind of edge loops here and maybe here, just to give, or actually, how about right in there, maybe, just to give some sharper ridges. Uh, that actually looks pretty good, although we really ought to add in a sharper ridge here. So I'm going to grab this edge loop. I'm going to hit Control tab go into Edge Mode, and then deselect this edge here and this edge here. And then hopefully this will work to just scale this out along the normals. And in fact, that works beautifully. So I just hit Alt-S, scale that out a little like that. And then I can do the same thing. Actually, you know what? I'm going to delete that edge loop that we just tossed in. So I'll just select it to hit delete edge loop. And that now actually looks really good. Maybe I'll take this one, hit control to E, edge slide, slide it back just to make sure that this is nice and smooth. I've got an extra loop right in here where we're seeing a lot of, or we're seeing an extra kind of curvature in there. So let's hit shift H in object mode just so we can see this clearly. And I then want to select just this side of my my edge loop here so we'll deselect these edges sometimes edges are a little bit of a pain to deselect in with your box selector or deselect box box just because you have to draw across both sides sometimes now with that side select i can hit alt s let me bring that out a little bit i can also go and hit Control e edge slide bring it all the way down and then edge slide and bring it back up just like that, and that will just kind of average it out. I can do the same thing with this one here. So maybe I'll go down, and then I'll go back up. And now that looks pretty good. Now I might go ahead and add in another edge loop just right up to this edge, just to make it nice and sharp. There we go. And maybe I'll add in one more right across to there. Or right, let's see, looking at this, Okay, let's go ahead and actually just take this edge loop and let's slide it back over to the other side where it belongs, right about like that. And that now looks like a pretty good propeller blade to me. So let's hit Alt-H uh, and view everything. And I'd like to go ahead and remove this intersection in here or else we could go ahead and maybe select this and we'll just go and hit R and, oops, first I hit commas, we're rotating around the individual center and we'll just hit R and Y rotate this just a bit that way we've got a little bit more tilt to the blades and that way it looks like the blades are just overlapping each other rather than intersecting each other and then what i want to do to replicate this effect over to the other side i could just duplicate the mesh down or i can go over here to the object data buttons select this mesh and i notice that it's using cube 0.005 as the mesh data so let's just now select this and we'll choose this to be cube 0.005 and now that uses the exact same mesh and all I need to do to replicate the exact results is just choose my subdivision surface so really what that does is says okay on this object the second propeller I want to use the mesh data that this object is using and 
I want to use that mesh data in the position of this object, of my original object, such that I'm not actually changing that at all. I'm just si simply changing the vertex data. So that works really well to kind of replicate uh, data across. And in fact, that's actually the same thing that happens when you use Alt D rather than Shift D to duplicate something to create a linked duplicate. It's actually just not duplicating the vertex data. It's only duplicating the object data and then referencing the same vertex. Okay, now what I want to do is go ahead and uh, work on the inside of my prop section here so that the blades are not intersecting here. So I'm going to hit Control Tab, go into Vertex Mode. Let's just select these loops right here and here. And we're just going to hit uh, S to scale them out. And we'll go out to about right there such that the blades are no longer intersecting. Maybe a little bit more. That looks about right. Let's go in here, add in another edge loop, and then we'll scale that out. Same thing here. Scale that out approximately the same. So we get a nice kind of inside sheath there. I then want to go ahead and select this edge loop. And what I'm going to do is, let's see, we're already set to normal. Uh, let's just go ahead and let's just pull this down manually. We can get it. It doesn't need to be absolutely exact. There we go. Somewhere right in there. And then I just want to add in another edge loop like this and another edge loop like that. And that other extra one was maybe a little bit close. There we go. We're going to do the same thing with this loop. So we'll just pull that up, add in an edge loop, and another edge loop. There we go. So that gets some nice solidness to that. And then I want to go ahead and add on the... Uh, well, actually, let's first do this piece. So we'll finish it off. Uh, I want to add in a nice bevel to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this circle. I'm going to scale it down, and I'm going to add an edge loop right actually on this side this way i'm maintaining the edge loops on the flat surfaces rather than the angled surfaces and then i'll add another one right there and another one down to the bottom and that gets a really nice bevel right along that i could go ahead and increase that a little bit by uh creasing that to say shift eight maybe the same thing with this one so that just makes that a little bit sharper and then i'll do the same thing on this piece so i'll add in a bevel right to there. I'll go and shift e, cre or crease that with shift E to 0 0.8 and I'll crease this one as well. Shift E 0.8. And then on this I'm going to add another edge loop right up to here and then I'm going to add one more edge loop down right there. Oops. Zoom in here. Control R. Add that in. Right click. Leave it right in the center and then I'm just going to hit Alt S and that will just push it right down along the normals like so. And I'll go ahead and crease this to 0.8 again. And maybe I'll do this one as well. And that looks pretty darn nice. So again, that's just extra detail that really helps kind of bring everything together. Okay. And that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and work on the mesh or the screen now. So what I want to do for this, let's go and save our file. Uh, I'm going to enable layer 2 by hitting tilde to bring up all my layers. I'm going to grab this nor this empty right here. I'm going to hit shift A, add in a, or excuse me, shift S and cursor to selected. And then I'm going to hit shift A, add in a circle. On this circle, I'm going to go and hit F6. I'm going to just choose 12 vertices. And... All right. There we go. My, my num lock was off. There we go. Okay. And then I can go ahead and I'm going to uh, go over here to the constraints. And constraints are really cool because it allows me to just work uh, with a basically constrain something or make another object affect another one based on certain parameters. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rotation of one of these empties and copy it over 
to this object such that this object is always using the same rotation as this one. So what I can do is with this object selected, I'll choose object constraints, add a constraint, copy rotation, and choose the target to be, let's see, this top empty is prop array. So choose in here, find my prop array. I can go ahead and filter the results by just typing prop and prop array. There we go. And now you'll notice that the rotation is exactly the same. And if I were to go in here and rotate this, you'll notice that it's affecting my prop and also the circle that I've just added. So obviously I'm not going to rotate these because I don't want to affect the props, but this allows me to just match this exactly. Now I can also go ahead and move this up along its local Z axis to about right there. And then I'll go and hit tab to go into edit mode. And while in edit mode, just to make this a little easier, I'm going to turn the influence down to zero, such that my rotation is still at zero. But as soon as I leave edit mode and increase this back to one, then my rotation is applied. So constraints are really cool for doing things like this. So to create the the mesh cage, I'm just going to with uh, one circle selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit E to extrude, right click, scale it in just a little bit, about like that. And then I'm going to select everything, hit E to extrude, take it up along the Z axis, about like that. And let's go in and add in a subdivision surface modifier, increase level to two, optimal display. And now I've got a pretty nice circle there. So then on this circle, what I'm going to do is hopefully, I think this will work because I can hit shift D and there's a tool called uh, push and pull. And what this does, if it acts how I want it to, is it expands the overall diameter or shrinks the diameter of my mesh, but doesn't actually affect the size of the vertices. So you'll notice as I'm pushing or pulling this out, the vertices at each point, say right on in like right in here, those vertices say the same distance apart. And so I'm not actually scaling the diameter of my uh, the the mesh. OK, so what I'm going to do is I've duplicated this. Let me first just actually delete this because I'm going to use a really tool feature called step and or not step and repeat, but the re repeat option. So I'm first with this select, I'm going to hit shift D, right click, and then I'll hit space bar which is already pulled up to my push and pull option. I'll bring this in and I'm just going to bring it in, say something like, uh, how about point, point 0.15 approximately. In fact, actually, let's just do that exact. So go in here and point 0.15, there we go. Then I'll hit enter and then I can hit F3 and click add duplicate and then F3 again and push and pull and phooey. I was thinking that that would actually affect the point, point 0.15, but it didn't. So instead, we'll now just do this manually each time. So I'll shift D and then push and pull point. Whoops. Push pull point 0.15. And then again, push pull point 0.15. Okay, so the step and repeat didn't work how I wanted it to, but that's okay. So you'll notice that now we have a really cool mesh. Now, do note that the push and pull, it didn't affect the width, but it did affect the height. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and make sure my vertex snapping is enabled. I'm going to hit S, Z, and snap up to there. And that should match the scaling of that one. And then I'll hit L to select this. Hit S, Z, snap to there. This one, S, Z, snap to there. This one, and then S, Z, snap to there. And so now they're all equal yet again. I can go ahead and at this point, you know, maybe I would turn my constraint back on. And now all I need to do is go in and add in the cross pieces to this to add in my final mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, this loop right here by alt right clicking on it. I'm going to hit common to make sure I'm rotating around the individual center. I'm going to hit shift D right click R and 90 degrees to rotate 90 degrees around the Z axis. And then I'm going to go and hit period to Actually, first, I'm going to go and hit Shift S, cursor to selected, to make sure I'm at the object origin. Then I'll hit Tab to go into edit mode. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit E, S, X, and negative 1 while scaling to the cursor. And that will just flip it across to the other side. And so now you'll notice that I've got a nice cross beam. Okay, I'm going to select this and I'm going to move it down the. 
uh, about like this. There we go. So now it's per sitting perfectly on there. And then what I want to do is just go ahead and hit Shift D and rotate this. So I'll hit Shift D, rotate, and we'll do 90 degrees. And then I'll go in here and select my first one. So now I have both of these. I'm going to hit Shift D, rotate, 45 degrees, and there we go. I now have uh, six cross beams. Uh, technically only three cross beams, but evenly distributed just like that. I can go in here, set my influence back to one, and go ahead and hit select everything in edit mode and hit shade smooth. Hit control in, make sure I don't have any nasty normals that you were seeing right in there. And there we go. I have a really nice cage mesh, which I can then go in and add in a mirror modifier, which this mirror modifier, I'll set the mirror object to be my... Uh, I think I have an empty mirror, maybe. Ah, prop mirror, there we go. So I'll mirror that across. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, Alt-D, hit G, double tap Z, move this down and position right about there. So now these meshes are linked. So if I were to modify this one, this one would be modified. And of course, both others would be modified. And they both are set to fit this array, or excuse me, the, the empty, so I can adjust that. And very, very cool way to work with uh, rotation on hard surface objects. I kind of wish I would have found a way to do that on the entire uh, propeller area, but that's okay that I didn't. Uh, you know, it's not a real big deal, particularly since this is not as, um, you know, it's not quite a independent section as these pieces are. But what I want to go ahead and do now is we're going to go in here and I'm going to select this object, or I guess it's actually part of this object. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to select one of these. I'm going to hit shift D, right click, P, separate by selection. Then I'll leave edit mode, select that new mesh, hit tab to go into edit mode. Well, actually, you know, what? we're just going to grab the entire object and hit shift S and cursor to or excuse me, selection a cursor. There we go. And then I'm also going to go ahead and hit Alt-R, make sure my rotation is nothing. Find my mesh right up here, select it. Let's just go ahead and pull it down along the Z-axis approximately to here. Let's go ahead and I just want to, uh, with this selected, uh, actually, what I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna go into my modifiers tab. I'm gonna delete the mirror modifier, hit tab to go into edit mode. And I'm going to hit uh, Shift S or Control Alt Shift C and origin to my geometry. This way, I can go in here and hit Tab to go into edit mode. And I'm just going to rotate this until it's flat, approximately like almost. That will be close enough right there. And then I'm also going to rotate this around the Z axis. So it's perfectly straight and you don't even you really don't have to for this point. This is just me being very particular with my mesh. OK, and there we go. So now that my origin is centered on this mesh, I'm going to hit Shift S and selection a cursor and then I'll hit tab to go into edit mode, move this out along the X axis and along the Z axis in object mode. I'll move it all the way up a little bit and go back down and then I'm going to give this the same copy rotation constraint set to the prop array. There we go. And then I can move this up along the local Z axis to sit right on here. And I'm going to turn off the copy rotation for the mo for the moment. And then, oh, and you can also turn off the copy rotation by just clicking the eye icon. It's probably faster. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Alt R, which is my spin tool. But in order to make this spin tool work, I want to go and hit F6, which will bring up my options for it. And the first thing I want to check is the dupli option. So it creates a duplicate rather than a extrusion. I'm going to set my degrees to 360 and I'm going to set my steps. Uh, let's go ahead and do, let's do 12 steps. There we go. That looks good. And so then if I re-enable this, you can see then it's duplicated right across and fits that now perfectly. Now you'll notice that it's not rotating perfectly because this is a little bit off, so I might just move this the whole object along the x-axis 
just a little bit like that. There we go. Uh, I can move it down along the local z-axis. I might need to... We're going to go in here. We're going to grab... Uh, actually, we'll just scale it up along the locals. From edit mode, select everything, scale up along the local z-axis just a little bit. Just because we've got a little bit of variation in here. But I want to ensure that everything is sticking through the mesh correctly. Okay. And that looks pretty darn good. So that saves all of that. And I then want to go ahead and give this another mirror modifier, which again, I will set uh, the mirror object to the mirror prop or the prop mirror. There it is. So it's mirrored across. And there we go. Okay, uh, let's do that little bit of modeling here on the top. Uh, first thing I want to do is work on this section. So in this section, I want to add in another edge loop, something about like that. I'm going to then uh, scale it. Let's see, if I scale this along the... Let's check what my normal is. Uh, let's just do the local z-axis, which will just push it out about like that. Looks good. Then I can go in here, I'm going to hit control tab, go to face mode, select these faces here, hit in or shift space and control space to turn off my manipulator, hit E to extrude, right click, alt S to bring this in just a little bit, and then I will hit Y to split that, and at which point I will also go and hit common to make sure I'm scaling away from the individual center, scale that up a little bit, and then I can add in, say, four edge loops here which then I'll select the two opposite ones and hit Alt-S, scale those way out. And then I could go ahead and... Actually, you know what? Let's slide these over to each adjacent edge like this. And then I can scale those out and that will create uh, a nice kind of overlap there. And I might go into vertex mode and deselect the two edge or the four edge vertices. Then I can make this a little bit more extreme, something like that. I can go in, maybe add in another extra edge loop there, extra edge loop here. Let's go ahead and give this our dark gray material. So I'll just click Assign. And then what I want to do is go ahead and crease these edges right here and here. Okay, so I'm going to hit Shift-E, say 0.8, and then I want to crease each one of these corner edges. So let's go into edge mode so that we don't get any of the parallel edges. There we go. Or perpendicular, I guess. And we'll shift E, 0.8 on those. And then I want to go ahead and add in a new edge loop right up like that. And another one up like that. Make that fairly nice and sharp. And... That edge looks like crap, so maybe if I take that down... Oh, no, definitely not. Uh, what I need to do is really just add in another edge loop right here, which I can then, from the cursor by hitting period, I'll hit S, double tap Z, take that out just a littlest bit. That now looks pretty good. Okay, I think I will uncrease uh, these corners. Let's see, if I shift E, negative one on that. Now that actually looks far worse. Okay, not going to worry about that. But if I, let's see what happens if I uncrease these. Shift E, negative one. Also looks significantly worse. Okay, so I'll just leave that like it is. That looks pretty good. Uh, for most distances, you won't notice the tiny artifacts that were in there. And... Let's see, I want to go ahead, and I'm not going to worry about the little bit of detail right in here, um, partially just because in order to do that, I would need to remove this whole seam that I've already added in, and that little bit of detail doesn't really make sense to me as far as what it might be, but I do need to work on this bottom piece right here. I'll just crease this, or add in an extra edge loop, right up like that, add another one.
Let's go ahead and hit Shift H so we can view this actually. Sometimes the edge slide is really finicky. There we go. When you're working with a perfect circle, sometimes scaling it just works better. Move that over. Move that over. So I'm just adding in extra edge loops here. And you'll notice a couple times that I caught the wrong edges and so just quickly pressed undo. So again, on each one of these, this is just control R, left click, slide it into place, left click again to confirm it. And that now looks good. I can hit Alt H, see how that looks. Looks pretty good to me. And currently, I guess there's not actually an engine attached to these. Uh, and so maybe this is where on, uh, I guess on the top side, we actually really ought to add in an extra piece. So what I'll do is I'm going to select, say, these two, or actually I'll select this face. I'm going to hit Shift D, Alt S, Alt S, there we go. Just bring it straight up like so. Then I'll hit E to extrude, bring it down. I'm going to take this here, or actually first I'll take this face right there. I'm going to hit E to extrude, bring this straight out into here. And then I will double tap this, scale along the scale along the local y axis down like that, just a little bit there. I'll go ahead and add in, say two edge. Or actually, you know, before doing that, I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to hit E to extrude, right click, pull it down like this. Maybe I'll rotate it around a little, scale it down the y axis, bring it over here. Hit one to go into front view. I can see I need to rotate this around the x-axis to fit the profile of the wing. Something about like that. That looks pretty good. And then I'll add in, say an edge loop right up. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna hit control tab, go into edge mode. I'm gonna select this one. What I wanna do is I wanna create kind of an edge right here, a beveled edge, such that this gets a nice merge right in here. And so rather than adding in the edge loops, I'll first select this edge, I'm gonna hit control E edge slide to bring it right back such that now when I add in that edge loop up like that I get a nice beveled edge then I can add in another one right there I can go ahead and do the same thing on this edge so the front edge would be nice and beveled so I'll select it hit control E edge slide and then I can add in that edge loop just like that and I get a nice beveled surface I'm going to hit control tab go into vertex mode select these loops deselect the back side Pull this up along the z-axis a little bit right there. Make sure that not, not intersecting too weirdly. I'm going to add in another edge loop right across the center like this. So I can then deselect everything right here. So I'm select just this tip and I'll hit Alt S. Uh, actually, you know what? Instead, I'm just going to pull it back manually, something like that. So I get a little bit of a curvature in there, to which then I will also add in another edge loop right up through there. And I want to select, say, this edge right, right there, and this edge from the side view. I'll go in, move it along right there, maybe move this whole loop back a little bit. Control E, edge slide. I'll select this whole piece, then deselect this side such that I can then just move this up along the Z axis a little bit, like so. I'm going to select this corner right in here, and then just move this back. And I might add another edge loop along the entire length like that just to square that up a bit looks pretty good and then what I want to do is we're gonna take this whole piece we'll just once again select the whole thing and then deselect what we don't want I'm gonna bring it back along here 
I'm going to rotate it. I can rotate around the x-axis about like that. Take it up along the z-axis a little. Somewhere in there. And I'm going to hit Shift S, cursor to selected. And I'm going to hit Shift A, add in a cube. Scale this cube way down. Scale it along the x-axis a bit. And then I will select this top edge, Control E, edge slide, bring it over. And then I'm going to delete this bottom edge. And what I'm doing is I'm creating uh, on the concept here, you can see in the top view, we've got these little pieces right here. And that's basically what I'm creating now. So then I'll also select this face, delete it. So that just means with a square edge, so I can select everything, shade smooth, select this, rotate it around approximately like so, move it over, scale it down along the Z axis, bring it down. Maybe I'll rotate around the X, about like that. Move it back along the Y, up along the Z, and bring it out along the X and the Y just a little bit. There we go. Just a little extra detail in there, kind of help merge the pieces together. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Um, I think what I'll do No, that's actually looking pretty good. Let's see. Just kind of giving this all a once over. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to select this face or this loop and this vertex. I'm going to hit E to extrude. Bring it down along the normals a little bit. Oops, not nearly that far. About like that. I'll scale it down a little. I'm going to add in another loop right down to the edge. And then I'll scale it up a bit. Add another loop there and then bring it uh, along the local Z axis just to bring it straight down. So then I can add in another loop right up like that. I can crease this edge to say 0.8 and I'll crease this one to 0.8. I'll add in another loop right down like that, make it a little more square. And I will select this inner edge, shifty 0.8 as well. And then I'm going to select all of these edges from here to here to here to here, there, there, not that one, then that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, a new material and I'll assign the light gray, click assign. And you can see that I need to add another loop through here such that those that material is not bleeding quite so much. And there we go. So that'll just, you know, be a nice little in cap to there. And that looks pretty good. I think we might just call that quits. Okay. Um, I am going to go ahead and select this edge. I'm going to hit. Um, no, actually, I think we'll just leave that as it is. We can check it from the front view. Everything looks pretty good from the side view. Looks pretty good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and call that quits. That finish off, finishes off the wings. And in fact, chapter five, uh, we're ready to now move on to chapter six in detailing the tail section. We'll get some pretty good nitty, nitty gritty de detailing right back in here. And then the tail fin itself will actually be pretty simple. So I'll see you in just a little while.